Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and ask in the name of our Lord that you open our hearts and as you speak to us through your word, what you speak to us will not only be heard through our ears, but will find room in our hearts. And what you say to us today will change our lives for your glory. Speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to start this morning by reading a few verses. I'll be reading from chapter 18 of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 1 through 6. These verses will be the basis for the message. Um, this is what the Word of God says. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he was drowned in the depth of the sea. Years ago, when I was a student of engineering in Beirut, Lebanon, one day, unexpectedly, the civil engineering professor made a reference to something that Jesus had said, and he made a comment about it. He said, didn't Jesus say that if you build your house on sand, it will fall down? But today, with our technology in foundation engineering, we can build on anything, sand, earth, and it, the houses don't fall down. Well, he was being critical of Jesus, and I thought to myself, I think this deserves some review. So I went into the Bible and checked the various records of what Jesus had said. And this is what I came across. It's in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 49. He says, But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation. See, the professor had partial knowledge of what Jesus had said. Jesus had said that if you build without foundation is when that house will fall. When people have partial knowledge, sometimes they tend to be critical and unfortunately it may lead them into some false conclusions. I had a similar experience with the subject that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, you know, one day, children were brought to Jesus so he could bless them. And the disciples were not allowing. So Jesus said, do not hinder them because the kingdom of heaven is for such as these. And my uncle had told me, you know, didn't Jesus say that, that the kingdom of heaven is for such of these, such as these? So only simple-minded people believe in Christianity. You got to be like a little child to believe in such things. And I was saying to myself, uncle, are you saying that I'm a simpleton? But I didn't say it to him. Nevertheless, his comment deserves some understanding of the scriptures. So when I read the verses that I read this morning, we find that Jesus has provided the explanation as to why he said that. Why did he say that 
the kingdom of heaven is for such as these, like children. Let's take a look at it. This is chapter 18, Matthew. Look at verse 3. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted, and this word converted in the NIV is changed, and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is saying, you need to convert, you need to change and become like a child. Now each one of us, we were children one day. So we were like that. But now as adults, he's telling us, you need to change and become like children. So you need to go back to where you were. So the question for us is, what do we go back to? What do children have that we have lost as adults? And as we look further in the verses, Jesus provides answers to that as well. Let's take a look at verse 4. He points out characteristics of children that children have, but as we grow up, uh, slowly we lose them. Verse 4. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So what he's saying is that we need to humble ourselves and become like children. The second quality that Jesus points out regarding children is in verse 6. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me. So here are two characteristics that Jesus points out in children. That one, that they are humble. And second, that they believe in Jesus. Now, I have four grandchildren. They, their ages are from three to ten. And I have the blessing and the opportunity to observe them as they grow. When they're very little, you could see that they have no arrogance in them. Now, you could see the effect of the sin nature in them in different ways. You see them, you know, being jealous. You see selfishness in them. You see anger, but you don't see arrogance. The little they are, the more humble the children are. They're naturally, um, inherently, they're, they're humble. Now, when we think about good, godly character traits, qualities, we naturally think about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control the fruit of the Spirit. But you know, we tend to assume that just like these qualities in the fruit of the Spirit, humility is also part of the fruit of the Spirit. But you know, it's not. We don't find humility in the fruit of the Spirit. The qualities of the fruit of the Spirit are the qualities of the Holy Spirit. Humility is not relevant to God. Humility, it is only relevant to humans. It's for us. So as the Holy Spirit dwells in us and changes our inner beings, the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit manifest themselves. However, the Holy Spirit may facilitate but does not develop humility in us. Humility is subject to our will. That is why Jesus said, whoever humbles himself. If a person does not humble himself, he cannot grow spiritually. If a believer does not humble himself, he cannot grow spiritually, and the non-believer, if he doesn't humble himself, he will not be saved. He will not have eternal life. 
Humility is the, like the root of a tree. If the root is bad, then that tree does not produce fruit. And if it does, it's going to be bad fruit. The fruit of the Spirit will not grow in our hearts and in our lives if we do not humble ourselves. I can give you many verses from the Old Testament as well as from the New Testament. In every case, God says, humble yourselves. His command, his instruction to us is that we humble ourselves. I'm not going to read all these verses today, but if you're interested, I can provide them to you. Humility requires an intentional act of the will. Now, what this means is the following. That is, actively and consistently rejecting any possession which we have and any achievement which we have accomplished as the basis for our self-esteem, for our self-worth. I'm going to say it again. What humility requires is intentional act of the will. That is, willingly, actively, and consistently rejecting any possession which we have and any achievement which we have accomplished as the basis for our self-esteem, for our self-worth. Now, we all have pride. And it shows up in different way in each of us. To grow spiritually, we need to work on humility consistently. I'm going to give you a few manifestations of humility to help us see what we need to work on individually. And as I said, we all have pride, but it shows up, it shows up differently in different individuals. Here is some manifestations of humility. The humble person acknowledges that he is a sinner, admits his failures, does not consider himself more valuable than others, acknowledges that all his gifts and talents are from God, is not argumentative, does not need to say the last word, does not try to impress others, does not have difficulty with asking for forgiveness, is ready to serve no matter what the task, has no difficulty with submission to authority, and is not upset when forgotten to be honored or appreciated does not consider himself humble. And I'm sure you can think of others where humility shows up in people. And I can think of myself as I say these where, you know, pride shows up in my life and I have to work on it regularly and if every one of us needs to think about it for ourselves. Uh, the second quality that Jesus mentioned is in verse 6. It says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me. You know, children naturally believe in God. The smaller they are, the more receptive they are. You talk to them about God, they accept God naturally, and they trust God. I think about my grandchildren. You know, there is no child who is an atheist. But as they start growing up, even as young as maybe seven, six, seven, eight, Satan slowly works on their faith and starts to destroy it until they grow up. And sometimes it's completely gone. But children inherently believe in God, believe in Jesus. You can talk to them and they accept it naturally and trust God. Several years ago, 
I came across an article in Reader's Digest. It was very interesting. The writer was a mother, and she was saying, both my husband and I, both of us, are atheists. So we had a little boy, and we decided that from the beginning, we will protect him from any religious knowledge. We will keep him away from any church, any news, any information that would tell him about God, would tell him about religion. So I, we kept him totally away from any idea of God. Because my husband was a soldier fighting in Iraq. And one day, my boy and I were sitting in front of the television and watching a program. They had brought a soldier who had returned from Iraq, and they were questioning him. And my husband, he says, she says, was in Iraq fighting the war. And as this soldier was being questioned, he was saying that conditions were very bad in Iraq, very dangerous, and soldiers were at risk all the time. They could be hurt or could be killed any time. And as he was saying that, she says, I noticed that my son kind of became serious. He bowed his head, and he was like contemplating. I turned to him, and I said, what was that? He said, nothing. I said, tell me. It's all right. You can tell me. And he said, I spoke with God. I asked him to protect my dad. And I said, how do you know that? How do you know about God? He said, I know. And that was it. And she, then she says, you know, we're still atheists. However, thinking about this child and that experience, it really makes us think about God and where truth really is. So, the point I'm getting at is children believe without difficulty. Children are naturally humble. But as they grow up, Satan is clever enough to really work on our hearts. And a slowly arrogance creeps in, a slowly pride comes in, and we start kind of relying on ourselves, and we start thinking great things about ourselves and forget the fact that everything that we own, everything that we are even able to achieve comes from God. And the simple faith that a child has a slowly is destroyed as we grow up. So Jesus says, you need to convert, you need to change, you need to go back and find what you have lost. Find that humility that you had as a child. Find that simple faith, trust that you had in Jesus as a child. I'm going to share one more thought with you. There is a town called Capernaum in Israel, and Jesus and disciples had taken the message to them, and these people had rejected the message, did not believe in Jesus. So Jesus commented about the people in Capernaum. Listen to what he says. This is in uh, Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 23 and 24. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. You know, when we think about the sins of Sodom, we are appalled. 
Now, the people of Capernaum did not have the sins of Sodom. They were arrogant, they had pride, and they did not want to believe in Jesus, in spite of the fact that he had done miracles there. They did not want to trust him. What does this say to me? It says that the sins of Capernaum, the pride and the unbelief in Jesus are more serious in the sight of God than the sins of Sodom. Wow, that's scary, isn't it? No wonder Jesus said, you need to change and become like children. You need to humble yourself. You need to believe in me. You need to trust me. Friends, if today you really want to find salvation, you want to have eternal life, Jesus is very clear. He says, humble yourself and believe in me, trust me. And if you're a believer already, you're a Christian, but you really desire to grow spiritually, the message is still the same. Humble yourself regularly and believe and trust in Jesus. And may the Lord bless you richly. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your words which are in our hands, through which we learn and we understand your thoughts. We understand what is the key for our spirits for our salvation, for our eternal life, for our spiritual growth. Today, Father, we learn through the words of Jesus that we need to become like children. That is, we need to humble ourselves and become humble again. And that we believe that we should believe in you and trust you with everything in our lives. Father, as human beings, we are weak. We acknowledge that. We are broken. We need help. Yes, we need to humble ourselves, but we need your help. Father, help us. Help us become like children, humble and full of trust in you. Father, I pray for everyone who does not know you, that you work on their hearts in this respect. And for everyone who is already a believer, that you give us the desire to listen to your words and to follow. Father, we want our lives to change daily and become like Jesus to glorify your name so that we become the light and the salt of the world, all for your glory. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.